<laughs> hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders of $10 or more, and help with the channel at the same time. You could also consider turning off your ad blocker when watching my videos. This week's game has some new commanders, some old faces, and a lot of action. This week, Fred is playing his Brego deck, and he keeps an opener with Elspeth Sun's Champion, a Plains, Cyclonic Rift, Prairie Stream, Sensei's Divining Top, Seat of the Synod, and a Snow-Covered Plains. Arcades has taken the Montreal stores by storm, and Eric is playing his version with Two Islands, Flooded Grove, Luminarch Ascension, Fortified Rampart, Wall of Omens, and Elspeth Sun Champion. Brian is taking his Will and Rowan deck out, and he's keeping a hand with Commander Sphere, Island, Reigns of Power, Factor Fiction, Mountain, Soul Ring, and Grim Monolith. And lastly, Alex is playing his Damia deck and keeps a Verdant Catacombs, a Strip Mine, Call the Weak, Birds of Paradise, Breeding Pool, Aetherflux Reservoir, and a Lotus Petal. Fred wins the die roll and starts us off. Fred plays a Seed of the Synod and taps it to cast his Sensei's Divining Top. Brian drops an Island and then casts Soul Ring. He taps the Soul Ring to cast a Grim Monolith and then taps the Monolith to cast Chromatic Lantern. Talk about ramp in non-green. Alex plays a Verdant Catacomb, sacrificing it but shortcuts to cast a Birds of Paradise and a Lotus Petal before searching for his land and passing to Eric. By comparison, Eric's turn is pretty simple and he plays a Flooded Grove and passes. Fred plays a Tap Prairie Stream and passes to Brian. Brian plays a Mountain and casts Commander Sphere. With nothing else, he passes to Alex. Alex plays a Breeding Pool and takes two to have it come into play untapped. He floats a blue, a black, and a green, and sacrifices his Lotus Petal to make one black and cast Call the Weak, sacrificing his Birds of Paradise for four black mana. Alex is then able to cast Damia, which he does, and he passes to Eric. Eric plays an Island, and he passes to Fred. Fred plays a Plains, and he casts Reality Acid on Damia. Brian plays Reflecting Pool, and passes turn. Alex draws to seven at the beginning of his upkeep, and skips his draw step. He plays an Ancient Tomb and taps all of his mana, taking two from the tomb to cast a Dark Confidant, followed by an Earthcraft. Eric plays a Caverns of Souls and names Elder as it enters. He then casts a Lightning Greaves and passes to Fred. Fred plays a Snow-Covered Plains and he casts Brago. He passes to Brian, who untaps his Grim Monolith at the end of Fred's turn. Brian casts a Factor Fiction in his main phase and picks Alex to choose the piles. Brian takes the pile with the Island, Chain Veil, and Tezzeret's Gambit. Brian plays the Island that he'd taken, and he casts Tezzeret's Gambit, drawing two cards. Alex orders his triggers to resolve the Damia first and then the Dark Confidant. He draws until he has seven, and then he reveals a Watery Grave with the Dark Confidant. Alex drops a Cradle for his land for turn, and he casts Azusa. He plays a Forest, and then a Strip Mine for his extra land drops. Alex then casts an Elvish Mystic, and he passes turn. Eric draws and plays a Sungrass Prairies. He casts Arcades, who gets a fancy pair of boots, which he wants to show off to Alex. Alex takes three commander damage, and Eric passes to Fred. At the end of turn, Alex strip mines Fred's Prairie Stream. Fred draws for turn and plays a Plains. He swings Brago at Alex, who takes the hit for two commander damage, and Fred bounces the Reality Acid and Brago. Damia is a casualty of the combat step as a result, and Alex puts her to the command zone. Fred reattaches the Reality Acid to Alex's cradle, and passes. In his main phase, Brian all but taps out to cast Nexus of Fate. Fred is ready for this with probably one of my favorite counter spells in EDH, Swan Song. Brian does get to shuffle the spell into the library though, regardless of whether it's countered, because that's just what I look for in my extra turn spells. He plays an Is It Boilerworks, bouncing his mountain to his hand. Brian sadly is too excited at this point, and he kicks my tripod. I readjust it during Alex's upkeep, and due to shaking and the concern of all those with getting motion sickness, I'm going to save you all some motion sickness and tell you that he drew Consecrated Sphinx and takes 6. Alex then draws for turn, and he brings out an Aetherflux Reservoir. He casts Elves of Deep Shadow, gaining 2 life. Alex then plays a Wooded Foothill, and a Watery Grave which he has come into play untapped, taking 2. 
He taps four creatures to untap his forest with Earthcraft four times, floating four green mana, and he sacrifices the wooded foothills, taking one to go and find a tropical island. Alex then taps his watery grave in Tropical Island to pay for the rest of the Consecrated Sphinx, gaining three life. He passes to Eric. Eric draws for turn, and Alex draws two. Eric then casts Wall of Omens, drawing as it enters and drawing from the Arcades trigger. Alex gets to draw four cards. Eric then casts a Wall of Roots, drawing a card from Arcades, and Alex draws two. Eric then plays an island and passes turn. At the end of turn, Fred activates his Sensei's Divining Top to look at the top three cards. Fred plays a Rogue's Passage for turn, and casts Steal the Godhead on Brago. Moving to combat, he swings his commander at Brian for four commander damage, and blinks the Steal of the Godhead, Brago, and Reality Acid. This forces Alex to sacrifice his Cradle, and Fred reattaches it to the Consecrated Sphinx and the Steal of the Godhead to Brago. With nothing else, he passes to Brian. Brian replays his mountain for his turn, and he casts Dream Halls, which is never a good sign, but Alex is quick to put a stop to this with a Pact of Negation. Alex gains one life from the Aetherflux Reservoir, and Brian passes turn. Alex taps his Tropical Island, Breeding Pool, and three of his creatures to use Earthcraft to untap his basic forest to pay for the Pact trigger on his upkeep. He reveals a Squirrel's Nest off the top with his Dark Confidant trigger, and takes three. Alex casts a Mana Crypt in his main phase, gaining one life, and then a Soul Ring, gaining two more life. He drops a Horn of Greed, gaining three life, and he plays a Yabamaya Coast, drawing a card from the Horn, and then an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, drawing another card. Alex then casts Squirrel's Nest on his forest, gaining four more life, but taking two from the ancient tomb he had to use to help pay for it. Alex then casts a Findhorn Elves, gaining five more life, and then proceeds to make 7,000 Squirrel Tokens. Alex then casts a Diabol Content, gaining six more life, and sacrificing his 7,000 Squirrel, going down to only 6,999. He finds a card, and he then plays Phyrexian Tower for his final land for turn, and draws from the Horn Trigger. He then taps the forest with the Squirrel's Nest on it for one green mana to cast an Arbor Elf and gain seven more life. By tapping his Urborg and untapping his basic with Earthcraft, Alex is then able to cast Priest of Titania, gaining a further eight life, and he passes to Eric. Eric draws for turn, and Alex draws two. Eric casts a Fortified Ramparts, drawing a card, and Alex draws two. Eric then discards a card at the end of turn and passes to Fred. At the end of turn, Fred activates his top to see what he's about to draw. Fred draws for turn, and Alex draws two more cards. Fred then pays two to cast an Iker Wellspring, drawing a card and letting Alex draw two more. Moving to combat, Fred swings Brago at Alex. Alex responds by moving to blockers and untaps his forest with the Priest of Titania and Earthcraft and then sacrifices his Arbor Elf to the Phyrexian Tower to get two black mana. He uses one of them to cast Dark Ritual, gaining one life from the Reservoir. He taps the forest to float one green mana, and needs only one black and one green to cast Abrupt Decay on Fred's Steal the Godhead. Alex also gains two life, and the enchantment gets destroyed, allowing Alex to block Brago with a Consecrated Sphinx. Brian draws for turn, and Alex draws two. At the end of Brian's draw step, Alex pays 50 life to use the Aetherflux Reservoir trigger to take out Brian, but Brian stops it with a Trick Bind. Brian sees his chance, with Alex being all tapped out, and he moves to cast Reigns of Power, and is pleasantly surprised when it resolves. The guys, knowing that they can't stop 6,999 squirrels, not to mention the rest of Alex's creatures, scoop it up and move to the next game. Game review time! This game will highlight something that I've been saying for a long time, and that's even though you have an expensive deck, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to win. I think you could tell from Alex's starting hand that he had a lot going for him and a lot of value in his cards. Had this game been one-on-one -on -one commander, I think he definitely would have won the game, but the problem was he was also competing against three other players, not just one. It also highlights the element of luck about the game, as Brian had Trickbind in his hand, which was the perfect answer to the Aetherflux Reservoir. It is a shame that Brian didn't cast any of his Planeswalker commanders or use any of their abilities, but he really didn't have to, as basically he used Alex's way of winning to win for himself. I thought this was pretty cool, and I'm pretty sure that Alex went off as he did because he was afraid of something like Kroos and Grip taking out a Squirrel Nest. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see anything cool from Eric, as the game only went to turn 6 before someone won. 
I will say though that Arcades is probably the most popular commander out of Core 19, but I have been able to film some other games with other Elder Dragons, and I'm hoping you're going to enjoy them in the future. I think in theory, Arcades offers the most power out of all of them, but he also requires you to be the most committed to him, and if he's not on the field, or if you have a Torpor Orb out, it kind of shuts the deck down. Similarly, Brago's going to have just as much trouble with a Torpor Orb as Arcades does. Reality Acid in Brago is pretty disgusting, as it allows him to deal with any troubles and permanents, but I think in the case of this game, it's what kept Alex under control. I think Fred did a great job with Threat Assessment, and hitting Damia, and then the Gaia's Cradle was probably the right thing to do. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.